Hi, I'm Bonnie Kemke. Welcome to my studio and welcome once again to Quilting on a Thread. So, I'm sure you can hear the little gravelly, you know, the gravelly throated voice I have right now. And that's because we've had COVID in my household. And so for one week I was nursing my husband through COVID and then the following week he was nursing me through COVID. And then the week after that, I'm just exhausted and trying to get back to it. So I haven't been in my studio for about three weeks. And so, because I haven't been using my Cunique in three weeks, it's time to give her an oiling. Um, this is a wonderful machine, but it needs to be well taken care of. And the Cunique, I mean, the Cunique manual is very good about how to oil the bobbin assembly but when it comes to the upper assembly it basically just says remove your monitor your display and drop two drops of oil in this hole well of course i use a flashlight and i look down in there and i see hmm that's not good enough for me so i have a diagram that is from a class that I took many years ago in maintaining a sewing machine. And this is just a generic drawing of a sewing machine and it's very busy. But we're gonna be concerned about the area up above here because this is your upper assembly with your thread uptake lever and the gearing that goes with that. So the gearing that goes with that are basically they're there are sprockets that go like this and anywhere metal touches metal. And so there are three of them and they basically give you that shoulder, elbow, wrist action, if you will. And it lets you have the me mechanism move your needle shaft. And this is, of course, this area is your needle shaft. And you know that's the needle shaft because of that corkscrewing there and the collar that you have and then you get down here and it's the bobbin assembly but we're going to be addressing this upper assembly here where you drop two drops of oil down into this hole and hope that it hits this gear this gear and this gear I'm going to show you how to actually get it on the gear and how I'm going to do that is by demonstrating how I do it now I use a sable round brush. It's a paint brush. It's never had paint on it. So that's how I use it. But I'm also going to discuss getting oil onto the shaft of your needle. And so this is a spare collar for my machine. And this is what you attach, this side is what you attach your um, foot to, you know, your presser foot. And then there's a hole in here and that's where your needle assembly goes through. We're going to dust up above the collar to get into that. And then we're going to go ahead and sweep some oil up on that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to be using a flashlight. We could use the oil that comes with your Cunic machine with the, um, Bout that it has, but I find that a little messy to use. So I use, like I said, a brush. I use a plastic bowl and two or three drops of my oil. This happens to be Singer oil, but machine oil is machine oil. It does not matter if it's the machine oil that came with your Cunique or any other machine oil. It needs to be machine oil, which is a very, very light oil. And we're going to oil where metal pieces move on metal pieces. We're not going to oil anything where a plastic or rubber piece meets on metal. That doesn't take oil. That takes machine gear grease. And that's a different um, weighted grease for every machine you own. So I don't do that. I take, when I feel my machine needs to be greased, I take it to the technician who works on that machine because they know the proper weight of grease. However, sewing machine oil is sewing machine oil. 
you want to keep it closed and you want to keep it debris free and it's good enough for any machine you have so I'm going to be trying to rearrange the video here and get you into my machine so you can see what I do how I do it and why I do it the way I do so while this normally takes me about five minutes it's probably going to take a little bit longer while I walk you through what I do and why I do it. All right, so I'm back. And the first thing I'm going to try and do is oil this area here on the machine. So flashlight helps. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of demonstrate. We have this, the collar for your machine. And where the shaft comes in there, that's what we have to dust off and oil. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is make sure your machine is not threaded. So I just pulled the thread out of the eye of my machine there, out of the eye of my needle. And I'm going to go ahead and because I haven't unloaded my quilt body off of my cutie frame, and that's okay, you don't have to. I'm just putting some paper toweling under there so that I don't get any oil onto my onto my quilt. So, let me turn that off. I'm going to reach around here and I'm going to lower the needle. This is why we unthreaded the needle. So I'm going to lower the needle down as far as I can get it so that I can look into that shafting area. And I'm going to take a clean sable brush and I'm going to dust this area up above the collar to make sure there's no lint on it. And I'm also going to dust the shafting here. Um, and I can go ahead and remove that thread out of that way. So this is just to dust it off and make sure that there's no lint. So once I've done that, I take my little plastic dish, I take the lid off of it, and there's been oil in there previously, but there's not enough oil to do what I need. So I'm open up the oil, and I'm going to go ahead and drop one, two, three drops of oil in there. I can add more if I need it later. So I'm going to take my round brush, dab that in there dab it on the side because I don't want more oil than just enough to dampen the um, bristles. And then I'm just going to reach up in here and paint the oil up above the collar. It helps sometimes to have a flashlight but I'm just going to paint that around because all I want is enough to give it a slight coating. Then I'm going to take my brush and set it aside and I'm going to take another brush that I use to clean excess oil off and I'm just going to now go over and mop where I oiled. Now the reason being is because with oil on your machine, less is more. Just enough to get the workings. And I'm gonna take this brush that I just used to remove the excess oil, and I'm gonna brush up and down this shaft. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is again, less is more. That moves up and down inside the collar, so if that is oiled, that will prevent friction on that. So now that's done. I'm going to raise my needle to its highest point and my uptake lever to its highest point. I'm going to reposition you so that you can see what goes on up at the top. Here we are again and you can see that the uptake lever is all the way up. We know my needle is up at its highest point. So you just lift that blue clip. Now Removing the power cable for the monitor, the display, is really easy if you will just grab the entire ribbon, hold your machine still, and pull straight. It 
comes out very easily. Then there's a white clip here that you just depress and pull your monitor out. Set this aside where you can't damage it. Now, just dropping two drops of oil down that hole is, well, it's not enough information for me. And I don't know that I can get you to see, but if you shine a light down in there or from the side, you'll see those gears. And you can see that shiny metal piece that's about a half an inch inside. So you can see these gears by shining metal in, I mean, um, a flashlight into the side. So you take the round bristle brush again, dab it in the oil that you've got there, dab excess off. Using your flashlight and the brush, just brush the oil where metal meets metal. Not so much, just enough to get it. And there are, as you do this, you want to go ahead and rotate your mechanics around because it'll present you with a new gear. So get in there with the oil, brush that around. And then there's a gear in the back that has a spring on it. You'll need a little bit more oil, dab that off, reach into that, as far as you can and get around that gear that has the spring on it. That's all three gears and if you've gotten them well then you can just rotate everything by hand and get all the pieces moving around. Now then we'll turn the flashlight off and we'll take the oil out of the way. And we will put our mechanics back in. So let me get this back here a little bit. So this just goes in that slot, hold it steady, push it until it clips. The white clip should be in place. Then take the power cable, find its position Push it in place. It's a nice tight fit. Bring this down. Boom. Now you're ready to turn your machine on and consider threading, but you're going to need to raise the needle all the way to the top because remember, we unthreaded. So I'm going to move you back into another position where you can see me again and we'll be right so once I've gotten everything closed back up, then I go ahead and I'm going to dry needle, which means I'm going to needle my machine without any thread in it. So I'm just going to turn it on and, and it's on and I'm going to go needle up and needle down. And it should sound very, very quiet. And just to be careful and, and be sure that I'm happy, I'm going to go ahead and do some dry needling, which means I'm going to turn it on and sew. And it should be very, very quiet. So now I'm ready to thread. Now I'm going to thread and I'm going to just do some basting because I don't really want to do any sewing quite yet. I just want to baste. So I'm going to put my machine on baste because that way it'll be easy to take the stitches out. So I'm on baste, and I'm gonna go ahead and re-thread my machine. Now, again, I always use my Dritz threader because I'm so nearsighted that I can't see any of this stuff. So I'll use my thr Dritz threader and thread my needle and my machine. And get my thread up underneath my ruler foot. Oh. 
came out of my drip threader, but that's okay because I can just rock that over. Okay, so now that's there. I put my drip threader over here on this little magnet that I always use. Now I'm in baste. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and just baste. And I'm going to turn it off. Come over and cut my thread. And because that is a base, it'll just pull right on out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to cut the bottom thread off. But that's my machine. It's all threaded. Everything is fine. The tension looked good. And I'm ready to start sewing here in the next few minutes. So now my machine is all ready for me to start sewing and um, quilting again here in just a few minutes. So I hope that this wasn't too complicated, too weird, um, because it can seem a little odd that I use a brush to oil my machine, but I find using a brush lets me have more control over where I put the oil, and it just makes sure that I don't put too much. So I hope that this will help you in your journey with your Cunique machine. Hope to see you again here on Quilting on a Thread. Bye-bye.